This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello, I'm Tom Brunt. Welcome to the first of my series of uh, netcasts on uh, quadcopter multirotor drone technology. With these netcasts, I hope to bring you a lot of useful information uh, on this exciting new uh, technology. Uh, it's sort of the wild, wild west right now in uh, this, this type of field, uh, as there's not a lot of uh, uh, regulation and, uh, well, frankly, people are still figuring out what to do with them. Uh, there's all sorts of applications that I'll be going into in this and future episodes. Um, so um, I'll also go over uh, tips, uh, techniques, uh, product reviews, and I hope to, as I develop this, hope to get to talk to other pilots and experts in the field. So uh, with that, let me tell you a little bit about myself and where I come from. Uh, my career is I'm a broadcast uh, video engineer. Uh, I started off at Humble Beginnings uh, in television production, uh, working at a local community uh, TV station up here in Doylestown. And uh, for the past 15 years, I've been uh, out on the road. I travel with the, uh, those big tractor trailer uh, mobile production units that uh, contain the full control room and all the equipment for televising, uh, mostly sporting events. Uh, I do the NFL, NBA, NHL, and every other sporting event in between. So with my job, um, what I'm required to do is uh, I'm the one that has to make sure all that stuff works for people to use it. Uh, so it can be a highly stressful job, but uh, it's rewarding as well. And it's great to travel the country and uh, see all sorts of different parts and different people. So that's uh, that's where I come from. So uh, let me tell you how I got involved with drones. Uh, it started about a year ago. Um, my uh, fitness trainer actually was telling me a story about how his uh, father uh, bought a quadcopter and had a camera on it. And it just suddenly, I've never heard of that before. I didn't know they were capable of doing that and that you could just go out and buy one. So I did some research on it, looked it up, and uh, I guess because of my video background, uh, I've always kind of um, wanted to explore different ways of how you can shoot and present video and, and photography. And uh, I saw this as a, as a great new opportunity. So I dove right into it. Bought my G DJI Phantom 1. Uh, and I started playing around with it. And since I am an engineer, uh, it's... It worked out well as since the DJI Phantom 1 is sort of kind of a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, it comes right out of the box, ready to fly. However, uh, you need to add things to it in order to make stabilized video and, and photography out of it. So I proceeded to do a lot of that stuff. Um, and I'll be showing you more about my three drones uh, later on uh, in, in this uh, later on. So, uh, here I am a year later, uh, lots of experience uh, flying these things around. Uh, it's all learned by myself, trial by error, a few crashes, and uh, you pick it up, put it back together, and off you go again. Uh, in the year, I have uh, done numerous uh, videos, and things are starting to pick up for me doing uh, more uh, drone photography and videography around the uh, Bucks County area, uh, which I'm very uh, happy for. And looking forward to see what 2015 uh, has in store. Especially since the FAA, it's been reported, is set to rule on commercial drone use by the end of this year. So that's very close. So uh, by early next year, uh, you can see the floodgates open up on uh, the use of these things. Uh, so I'll get into that a little more, but uh, first let me, uh, let me show you my, my family, the, the drone family. So um, 
I, since I have a video background, I also plan on shooting these uh, podcasts in maybe not so much the traditional manner that you're used to. I'll be using different techniques. Some of them I will probably be doing it while out on the road. So um, we'll start with this. I'm going to take you through a tour uh, through uh, into my work uh, workshop to uh, show you the three uh, the three drones. So uh, to do that, I'm going to uh, shoot it with a GoPro on my head. Yes. And there we are. So I'll see you over at the workshop. Here I am in my garage workshop here, and right here I have what is currently my drone family. And I do like to put the uh, faces on them and give them each personality. So you can think of them as a uh, Papa drone, Mama drone, and Baby drone, or uh, as I have named them, Humpty D, Little Buddy, and Tiny Tim. Uh, so let's take a look at each of them. I have them all fired up here, so you could just uh, see them blinking here. So let's start with the little tiny one. This is a Cheerson CX-10. And it cost me about $21. And uh, you can get these on Amazon or eBay stores. And believe it or not, it does fly. Here is its little controller. And I'll actually let it take off a little bit just so you can see. So there we go there. So uh, uh, in a future show, I'll do a more in-depth uh, study on this, uh, this little guy here. Um, but uh, it flies just like uh, any other kind of quadcopter would fly. Uh, it's actually been kind of called the uh, world's smallest quadcopter, and uh, you really can't figure out how they fit everything in there uh, that's needed for this thing to fly and fly as well as it does. So there's Tiny Tim. Let's move him over there. Next one I have here is my SEMA XC5, uh, SEMA X5C. Uh, this was uh, about $60 on, again, Amazon or eBay. And I would call this a good starter drone for you. It comes with its own uh, 720p camera. Uh, not the greatest picture quality, but still, uh, for $60, uh, again, it has its own controller. And it flies very similar to the bigger ones, too. Um, uh, what's nice about it is that it's it's very durable. It can handle... Uh, little crashes and things like that and it has the prop guards on it so uh, you won't hurt yourself or other objects or you can also it also uh, protects the craft a little bit so uh, there'll be an, a good in-depth study on this and again another episode so let's put him aside put him down there and now for the big boy uh, this was the first drone I got uh, this is the DJI Phantom 1 they don't make this one anymore. Uh, they're now up to the Phantom 2, uh, which has bigger battery, uh, longer distance, and all that. But this one I have outfitted uh, with a, it's called a camera gimbal, and the GoPro. So what this allows to do is, notice as I tilt the craft around, you can see how the camera stays in place. That is crucial, crucial for good quality uh, photography and videography. And uh, these are meant to do that. So, uh, and here's the controller for that. Again, a lot bigger, uh, a, lot more, um, a lot more stuff this is capable of. It has GPS. It's able to find its way home should it get lost. Uh, it uses GPS to stabilize it more. It's got more functionality to make it easier to fly. It's a very easy craft to fly, all, albeit a lot more expensive. Um, this was my first craft, and I wish I had known about the other two that I uh, bought later, because I would have loved to have learned on them first before going to, to the big guy. But uh, there'll be another in-depth study on him. But anyway, there's my uh, three crafts for you. Now that you've seen my uh, little drone family, now let's uh, get into some uh, pertinent issues uh, right now uh, in the headlines uh, for uh, drone tech. Well, probably the big one right now uh, is that the uh, FAA, after being very slow to uh, respond to uh, quadcopters and what they're capable of doing and allowing uh, commercial use of them, um, they have in the past basically uh, have 
decried them for hobbyist use only, meaning no commercial photography, uh, shooting a wedding, uh, shooting real estate, no. Um, even things like uh, search and rescue, no. Um, they have been challenged in court uh, a couple times this year, and in, in most cases uh, have lost. So the pressure has been on for the FAA to uh, finally recognize uh, this technology and um, come up with sensible regulation. Uh, do they need to do it? Absolutely. Um, think of what happens when tons of these things are starting to fly around from just anybody and there is no regulation as far as having any experience or you know, flight patterns and, and all sorts of issues. So uh, it was recently learned that the FAA is set to make a ruling, possibly by the end of 2014. So we're a few weeks away from that. So let's see uh, what they uh, come up with. Uh, as it stands, there's been little baby steps taken. Um, just uh, about a month ago, uh, six production companies in California were given an exemption to use uh, drones for filming uh, in Hollywood. So, only six companies, but they've been given full clearance to operate on private uh, properties uh, for uh, filming, which is a commercial use. So, baby steps, but a step nonetheless. State Farm has recently petitioned uh, the FAA to uh, allow um, uh, inspections during times of crisis. Um, think of like the um, think of like Hurricane Sandy, and think of uh, flying uh, drones with cameras over the area to survey the damage, as opposed to sending people out there in possibly more dangerous conditions. And you can see stuff from above that you can't without climbing up on roofs and, and, and that nature. So uh, they're hoping to get an exemption. Uh, they may not need it uh, if the FAA rules uh, like they're supposed to shortly. What will this mean? Well, I don't really know yet because uh, I don't know what they're, um, how they're going to regulate it. Will you need a license? Will you need to uh, have a flying uh, instruction and experience just like a pilot? Who knows um, how it will um, affect um, air travel, uh, air traffic control. Those remain to be seen. But the fact that they're going to rule uh, very shortly uh, says that they're finally, uh, they're finally ready to make some steps. So that's very, very good news uh, for the drone community because uh, it has been kind of stifled this year uh, with... Um, with not being allowed to use it for any commercial ventures. Um, there's a lot of technology out there that other countries are using them for. And uh, you'll see some videos about that in upcoming uh, uh, episodes, uh, some of them um, very shortly. Um, and all sorts of applications that uh, have been kind of stymied by the lack of um, uh, the FAA um, ruling on how you're allowed to use them. Uh, so let's hope that that uh, is coming to an end by the end of this year and that 2015 will suddenly see a floodgate of all sorts of applications and uh, useful technologies uh, from the drone market. I mean, uh, five years uh, could be very telling in, in what we see. I mean, delivery aside, uh, I'm not sure that's really going to be practical within five years. But uh, there are a couple of neat applications that um, could prove to be very helpful. Well, let's get into one of them now. How about an ambulance drone, a flying defibrillator? Uh, there is a, uh, a Dutch graduate student uh, has come up with a concept of uh, using a drone to um, cut down the emergency response time. Just imagine um, a patient going into cardiac arrest and it could be 10 minutes to half an hour away from ambulance, especially in a crowded uh, urban setting. Um, this drone, when placed in strategic locations, uh, can cut response time down to possibly a minute. And uh, as this video shows, um, how they can talk a person through using it. Now please pick up the drone. Bring it to your father. You're doing great. Okay, 
pull the green lid. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good, I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna, please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. I mean, just imagine the possibilities of something like that uh, in our crowded cities. Uh, not only if, not only just a defibrillator, but uh, could be any kind of emergency care kit that uh, somebody on the scene can uh, administer first aid before the ambulances can even get there. Think of New York City, think of uh, Chicago, LA, the high traffic uh, areas, uh, that uh, response time can be very difficult for an ambulance. But it's not that difficult when you take it in the air. Next up, let's talk about some uh, entertainment use uh, for drone technology. Uh, American band OK Go, who uh, has become uh, quite known for elaborate single take videos, has produced uh, an epic video for their song, I Won't Let You Down. It was uh, shot in Japan uh, in the course of 50 to 60 takes, single take, um, aside from the fantastic choreography and uh, just mind-blowing choreography and these uh, cool little Honda Unicab scooters that they're uh, running around on. Uh, the entire thing was shot in a single take with a, uh, a multi-rotor, a drone. Uh, the, uh, in the video, uh, the drone uh, kind of goes up and comes down around them and goes back up again. And at the very end of the video, it goes to a height of about half a mile in the air and then proceeds to show you the whole uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding panorama of the uh, area of Japan where they shot this video. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic and uh, I definitely recommend that you uh, take a look at this video. Uh, there's also a behind the scenes uh, little vignette on it as well. Well folks, that's about all I have for you for uh, this first uh, episode. Uh, it's uh, kind of a new experience for me being in front of the camera. I'm so used to repairing them, not actually being in front of them. Uh, so I hope you bear with me as I kind of improve myself uh, in upcoming episodes. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any ideas for topics I can uh, talk about, or if you're an uh, enthusiast yourself, uh, please feel free to drop me an email at droneguy at tebweb.com. That's droneguy at tebweb.com. And I'll see you soon here on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you.